بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایڈوانس مائکرو اکنامکس لیکچر تھرٹین ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر وی وار ڈسکسنگ ایکسچینج ریلیونٹ ٹو کنزمپشن اینڈ کنزیومر اینڈ ہیئر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ایکسچینج بٹ اٹس ریلیونٹ ٹو پروڈکشن اینڈ ریلیونٹ ٹو consumption when we see there was the two goods that are going on to trade between to the consumers and there here are the two goods that have to be exchanged between uh, uh, the producer and the consumer and uh, what will be the equilibrium after this exchange and uh, actually production include uh, the amount of goods within the markets and that are no longer fixed and uh, depend upon the market prices for of the goods which the consumer are going to purchase. Okay, uh, what are the main assumptions of uh, discussing general equilibrium? That is first one that they are the two agents as uh, you are discussing in the previous chapter. Similarly here are the two agents but these two agents are not the con both are not the consumers one is consumer and other is producer and second one two goods produced within the economy it means similarly two goods two persons model but these two persons are not two consumers one is consumer and another is producer the main topic of your uh, chapter is propensity growth economy and uh, why uh, the concept was uh, given uh, in regard of this and uh, what is the propensity growth economy actually uh, in here in this economy both the joints that is consumer producer are going to discuss and uh, we have to discuss the utility maximization and utility diminishing in regard of production and consumption and uh, in such an economy the same new pattern will be followed as uh, in respect of the consumption to its intelligence model and uh, there was uh, only consumption but here is the element of production so this is actually the main model of a cruise economy that is explained with the help of diagram before giving its explanation first you see at the vertical axis we take the good one that is food and on another what horizontal axis we take the good uh, labor supply and uh, here is the production possibility frontier and indifference map and here the indifference curves are not uh, inward or downward stopping they are outward and they are the indifference map actually here is uh, showing the upward slopes and uh, why it is upward because uh, <coughs> here we are taking the labor supply and uh, on the horizontal axis and that should slow utility as we increase uh, the supply of labor and uh, typically labor layer choices and on the horizontal axis layer is as a good and uh, production function we have always understood that it is catered the inputs and the labor by robinson Sh- yes first name basic with him produced and due to diminishing margin product of labor the shape of the production function is concave you can see here the shapes of uh, this is the indifference curve that is sloping upward and this is the production function that is sloping downward and this is the point of equilibrium and uh, we can say that the optimal choice of robinson should uh, then be uh, where his production function just meets the indifference curve and this is the equilibrium point where production frontier is equal to the indifference curve and where both the curves are intersect and uh, at this intersection vision uh, always raises utility by increasing labor supply or decreasing it 
whatsoever is needed at that time and the choice is given that the technology is available to the Robinson and which is presented by the production function and uh, here we can see that the production function change and consequently the equilibrium choices would be altered and this can be presented that equilibrium is where MPL margin productivity or labor is equal to MRS marginal rate of substitution L and F. So pattern is actually tangent to the highest indifference curve. At this point, we can say that at this point, equilibrium lies. You can call it an equilibrium where M R S marginal rate of substitution that is derived from the I C equal to M P L that is derived from the production function. Here is given the explanation of the diagram which you can study in detail for understanding the previous diagram. Here is the second topic of your chapter that is what are the first and second Wolfer theorem regarding the uh, production and consumption concept and what are the um, the concept relevant the first Wolfer theorem actually first Wolfer theorem again explain the concept of pretty efficient allocation it means that uh, profit maximization ensures efficiency is achieved and uh, allocation is equitable and uh, equitability needs to be well defined and uh, first welfare theorem says that competitive equilibrium is pretty efficient and so you can remember it that what is the first welfare theorem's first point that Pareto efficient allocation are Pareto efficient and the uh, second one is competitive equilibrium needs to exist in the first place and uh, that leads to the increasing return to scale if you remember the concept of your uh, third semester microeconomics intermediate microeconomics that uh, there are the three levels of production decreasing return to scale constant return to scale and increasing return to scale so you can understand that in competitive equilibrium the production is uh, uh, according to the first theorem there is the increasing return to scale words will be the effect on the production and uh, the next one the point third is that there are no production externalities that is choice made by the firms to affect uh, other firms there you know that there are two types of cost internal cost and external cost and uh, if uh, production is affected by the external externalities that it will automatically uh, affect the total production and uh, that must be uh, affected by uh, the other firms that is linked with it and uh, the next one uh, there is no consumption externalities it's mean that there is no production externalities and there is no consumption externalities it's mean that similarly but firms don't affect the consumer's choice which is the strong assumption of the first uh, first welfare theorem and uh, next one is what is the second welfare theorem actually uh, second welfare theorem is the extension of pure exchange economy that is uh, well explained by the um, point of Pareto efficient allocation in the previous lecture of exchange and consumption too and uh, here is uh, the point first that uh, consumers preferences and con producers productions both explain the concept that ic is convex to the region and in the case of increasing turns to scale in the pre-division location we need to reservation on dormant of the player and let's competitive market use the prices as signals are being about our competitive equilibrium and uh, production of redistribution include both income and labor and ownership shares so second welfare theorem recalls that the difficulties associated with the redistribution of endowment and uh, these difficulties remained true here it was all about 
today lecture and uh, uh, because it was uh, too much theoretical so it's maybe not as much as interesting for you as was previous lecture in case of any confusion please discuss in the comment bar i love